I, it's Monday and all anybody is talking about today is that dreadful ass Lifetime documentary, Where is Wendy Williams? And to be honest with you, I don't want to talk about it, but I know y'all want to talk about it. Here it go. Nessa girl, did y'all get into that Wendy Williams documentary that they got going on Lifetime? I'm going to be the first person to tell you I have not watched it. I have seen the various clips that have been floating around on social media, and I have seen enough. I've had a couple conversations with some friends, and I have seen enough. To be honest with you, I just have no interest in sitting there and watching Wendy Williams deteriorate in front of our eyes. There is nothing entertaining about that and quite frankly they could have did an article and a write-up in people magazine describing her condition and that would have been enough for me i'm not pleased with it at all i'm not pleased with it at all i am very uncomfortable with it and it was not until her niece alex finney who actually is a news reporter down here in miami on channel 10 it wasn't until she got on the view and did an interview that made me feel a little more comfortable from the family's perspective. Before I heard Alex Alex's interview, I was of the assumption that the family did this documentary and collected the proceeds from it from monetary gain. Because I'm sitting here like, if you love somebody, it is your job to protect them. And who on God's green earth would allow their family member to go out like this. I said it on a blog post earlier before. We didn't know Barbara Walters had dementia until she died. We did not see a single image or media clip of Barbara Walters with as even much as a hair out of place. Bruce Willis is suffering with aphasia. And the only videos we see of Bruce Willis is like when they had a little birthday party at the house and the family was coming around and clapping, and it was showing him feeble and frail, but in an happy, loving condition. Y'all got Wendy Williams on this TV looking a damn fool. And I, everybody is saying, Wendy had a three-deal, lifetime deal, so what? Let her produce... If she had a three-picture deal with Lifetime, she could have produced another horrible-ass Aaliyah documentary as far as I'm concerned. She could have did a documentary on all the historic interviews she did over the years and had people come in and speak about it. There are a lot of things that Wendy Williams could have done outside of this documentary. Now, an argument can be made that Wendy wanted to do this, but here is my thing. Wendy on her show was always one of those people who was well put together, so on and so forth. And there is an argument that can be made that Wendy wanted to do this more so when she was in her right mind. I just don't think anybody, especially anybody whose career has been plagued with drug and alcohol abuse, would want to be on television being portrayed as an alcoholic and watching people in the midst of their addiction and their mental illness. There's just no way to go out. Um, and again, at first I was feeling like the family is not protecting her, but come to find out this documentary was supposed to be about Wendy's comeback and her doing a podcast. Because I was wondering, and the reason why I was side-eyeing the family I'm like, this documentary shows her in a negative light and y'all are fucking participating in it. Who does that? But now that I understand that it was to show her comeback during a podcast, then perhaps the footage of the family members was captured when they were under the guise that the documentary was going to be something else. And now it is what it is with this. Now, some people are saying, and a friend of mine told me at the very end of the episode or whatever, 
that it was conveyed that the family is okay with this documentary being shown because they want the world to see what is going on with Wendy and this conservatorship. And I guess the argument can be made that they're fighting so hard to regain control of her that it's worth the damage that it may be causing to her image if it can draw up enough publicity to get somebody to do something about the conservatorship. Now, as it comes to the conservatorship, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I 100% agree with the financial conservatorship. I 100% agree with the financial conservatorship. I don't agree with the medical conservatorship. I don't agree with the physical guardianship. From my understanding, I've got a lot of social work friends. I've got a lot of friends who care for aging parents. Let the family members be the physical guardian guardian and let the financial conservator have to approve expenditures. It's that simple. The finance people write the checks for all her reoccurring bills. Then if something comes up, you submit a request to the, fin to the financial person, they approve it and cut the check. I don't understand how something that went from a bank concern has now morphed into a adult protective services physical custody situation. The two things, in my opinion, live in two separate wheelhouses. Now, I'm going to sit here and say what's not being said and what a lot of people don't want to hear. Kevin, the husband, broke Wendy. And I'm not a doctor, but there's an argument to be made that that caused her psychotic break. But it is Kevin Jr.'s, it is Wendy's son fault that she is in financial conservatorship right now. It's her son's fault. When you go in there spending over $100,000 in Uber Eats and all this other lavish shit, the bank flagged it. It's completely his fault. And a lot of y'all were saying the son should be the one caring for her. Well, the son has already demonstrated that he's not mature enough to be over Wendy's finances, despite the fact that when she passes, all of it's probably going to go to him anyway. He's already demonstrated that he's not responsible enough to be over the finances, and rightfully so. He's a young, spoiled, rich kid living in Miami. If y'all turn that boy loose with that account, that money going to be spent on bottles, clubs, Lamborghinis, jewelry. He's going to run through it. And I'm not blaming him, any of us. In our 20s, living in a popping ass city, L.A., New York, Chicago, Houston, Dallas, anywhere, Vegas, any of us would blow through the damn money because A, we don't understand the value of a dollar and B, he was raised in such a way where he probably thinks it's an, a never ending supply of money at the end of that rainbow. So I'm not even mad with what the son did. That's just what young people do. But we have to be honest. It's the son and his access to her money that triggered Wells Fargo to do this financial conservatorship. Not to mention, with the son also being so in cahoots with the daddy, the daddy would have had the son taking Wendy money out of her account left and right. So I am 100% in favor of Wendy money being all sold up at Wells Fargo. And just recently, I don't know how true it is, but Kevin Sr. has come out and said that Wendy's sister... Stole from her to the tune of $15 million. Now, I don't know how you steal $15 million from somebody. And I don't know if it's true or not. But here is what I will say. Because I understand human nature very well. Um, You're not going to sit here and tell me. That any one of Wendy, Wendy's family members. Are not going to have access to all of her money. And then upgrade their personal lifestyles. Y'all know that's just the way human beings work. Even if the sister. Was not going to spend up all her money. She damn sure was going to spend some of it. Okay. It's just basic human nature. When folks have access to that type of money. And they don't have on their own. They are going to buy things that they normally were priced out of. 
Um, I would just hope in doing so that it wouldn't be to the tune of millions of dollars. I definitely don't agree that the son needs access to the money. And I'm not 100% sure that the sister needs access to it either. What I would be more comfortable with is the financial person putting Wendy on a salary. So each month she get a drop. A nice lavish drop. Wendy lived lavishly. All right. So all of her bills are taken care of. And each month she get a twenty, thirty thousand dollar drop for her to continue to live lavishly. And if her sister or whoever is looking after her, even if they blow through her twenty or thirty thousand dollars that she get a month, the lion's share of her wealth is still being protected. Okay. There is a way. That this thing can be done that's satisfactory to Wendy's finances and satisfactory to her well-being and the family. When Alex got on The View and said that holidays and birthdays have gone by and they can't even contact Wendy, that's 100% inappropriate. It's inappropriate. If you are a guardian over somebody... Whenever the hell they call you, if you're unable to answer the phone, you should be getting back to that person within 24 hours and you should be sitting on the phone with them as talking to them for however long that they want until they feel satisfied. If she is locked away in a facility, the family needs the number to the orderly, the social worker, the nurse, whoever it is that's seeing about her. The family needs visitation. I'm not understanding how... Y'all can lock away somebody's family member and not give her family physical access to her. Does she have a cell phone? Does she not have a cell phone? What is her room number? Somebody needs to be FaceTiming me on the daily, letting me know what's going on with my family member. It's just not right. And I do hope that the family is able to somehow... Uh, petition to get some of that withdrawn. Now, my question is, because we're hearing from everybody except the conservator, there's always two sides to every story, and I'd like to think that any reasonable human being would be in agreement that it's in the best interest of anyone to be around their loved ones. So the fact that this conservator, the court, the legal system, has made it possible for Wendy's family to not have contact with her or to have minimal contact with her, I'm curious to know what the reasons were that this was approved. The second thing, that publicist, that Alex was like, you know, basically go away from me, don't talk to me, you need to leave. Is it me or, that, or did that publicist feel too much like an intern to be the publicist of an A-list celebrity like Wendy Williams. It would seem to me that Wendy Williams would have a publicist that exudes the energy of Olivia Pope. That girl who was around Wendy Williams seemed like a fucking intern or a first-year junior publicist. Red flag number one. Um, the way that Wendy was talking to that nail tech and talking to that assistant was 100% atrocious. All right? However, that is how it works with people with dementia and these other mental disorders. They get mean, they get angry, and I am glad that the people around her, you know, are not taking it personal. Now, that nail tech looked like her feelings were hurt. And, you know, some people say that dementia brings out who people really were. Do y'all think that Wendy spoke to people and spoke to the higher help like that when she was in her good state of mind. I don't, you, you know, it's just like when people get dementia, they forget everything except that damn racism, them old elderly white people. I'm curious to know if Wendy conducted herself like that when she was in her right mind. And that's why it was just so easy for her to revert to being mean. But I don't know. Um, but I just pray that anybody who continues to work with Wendy, that they have a good understanding of the doggone disease um, in order to better accommodate her and not take it personal. Um, last but not least, the guardian of Wendy Williams has filed a lawsuit against A&E. Um, 
Now, I don't know if the lawsuit is to block the documentary and they're doing the lawsuit in order to protect Wendy or not. Um, but all in all, y'all, this is not a good look. And, and, and I know, you know, Alex, her niece, who I trust and feel comfortable with, says that her aunt wanted to tell her own story and to control the narrative. And I understand that wholeheartedly. But there's just a part of me that says, yeah, she wanted to control it. Kind of how Britney Spears wanted to control hers. She wanted y'all to see what was going on and how people were treating her. But I don't think that Wendy wanted people to see her in the midst of her illness and down bad like this and looking like an alcoholic and looking like a crazy person. And there's no dignity in that. There is no honor in that. And another thing, the scene where whatchamacallit had the bottle of alcohol and she was hollering about leave her alcohol there and she had drank that whole bottle of alcohol. She don't drive. She don't have access to the money. Who is going out and buying her alcohol? Who is going out and buying her alcohol? And don't get me wrong. Everybody need, need a little piece of cigarette. Everybody need a little piece of reefer. Everybody needs to drink now and then. And I'm going to be honest with you. You know what? If Wendy is on her way out of life. And if she's at the tail end of or in her golden years, I'm not going to sit here and say that she need to quit cold turkey. Ain't nothing wrong with having a cocktail here, too. And if you are going to buy her alcohol in order to quench whatever thirst for a drink she have, you don't go buy no full bottle. Go get her a little pint. Go get her little miniatures. I get it. Sometimes when you're dealing with people who have addiction and stuff, you know, you know they shouldn't have stuff, but you still want to see them happy. Go get a little small bottle. Who goes and gives an alcoholic and an addict and a person that's probably on all types of medication and lymphedema and all this stuff a big old bottle of alcohol and just leaves it with them? That's reckless and that's irresponsible and it makes me wonder... You know, is this part of the reason why the Guardian said she don't need to be around y'all because we left her to her own devices. We left her unattended to and we want to let the family kind of monitor her and y'all ain't kind of monitoring her. I, I, I don't know. Um, but all in all, y'all, this is not a good look. Um, I'm not pleased with this at all. This is not protecting Wendy. There is no dignity in this. This thing is horrible. It is horrible. It is horrible. It is horrible. It brings me a little peace that the family is relatively all right with it. But I'm still side eyeing the fact that y'all felt that this was the only route to getting your point across, getting heard, and trying to regain control of Wendy Williams, y'all. That's all I got on the situation. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all think. And I'll call y'all hoes later. Bang.